All right, guys, and welcome to the Kyogo Show. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. That was yesterday. Sorry for the confusion. This is Scottish Football this week, and I'm Kevin Twist, of course. This is the Kevin Twist YouTube channel. So let's start with Dundee. We'll get to the Scottish League Cup final in a wee bit. Trust me. We'll start Dundee as Hearts get another win on the board. And our three points in the bag for them as Jamie Walker scored with 15 minutes to go. He came on in the 60th minute for Gary Mackay Stevens and he scores to get the win for them. Hearts have done amazing so far this season, a lot better than probably everyone thought they would. Maybe bar the Hearts fans who are a little bit biased of course. And then we go to the Livingston game against Ross County. Ross County scored in the 45th plus one minute, so the 46th minute basically. And they were just, you know, they were seeing it out it seemed, they were just going to see it out here. They got to the 89th minute and Obelai gets the goal late on to equalise. They've got to feel a bit sorry for themselves, two late goals they've conceded recently. Midweek to Celtic with a late winner for Celtic. And then, you know, to go and concede late again to drop more points. They've got to feel very sorry for themselves of what could have been. Especially when they're in that relegation battle. Then we go to Motherwell and I just fine thanks. Cheers for asking. And they got their two goals that they need to see off St. Johnson. We'll get to them in a second. 17 minutes in, Dean Cornelius gets the goal. And then early in the second half, Kevin Van Veen gets another goal. He's been pretty decent this season. Him and Tony Watt, especially in that attack. Willery as well has been pretty alright, I guess. Maybe not with his goal contributions, but he's been alright when playing, when I've seen him at least against Celtic. But St. Johnson, the bottom of the league still. You know, last season, top six finish. League Cup win. Scottish Cup, they won as well. They've done the double. And then this season, the bottom of the league, fighting the likes of Ross County and Dundee, you know, sides you expect to be done there. St. Johnson, no one would have expected him to be in this relegation battle. Just off the course of last season, you know, they've done arguably the best bar Rangers, because Rangers were unbeaten in the league. But St. Johnson won more trophies, so you'd arguably maybe say them, but, you know, that's up for debate. But very uh, disappointing season from them so far. It'll be interesting to see if they sack the manager, especially after last season, you know. Then we go to Ibrox. Rangers faced a very weakened and younger Dundee United team. That almost pulled up an upset, but we'll start with Rangers' goal. Dundee United, handball, led to a Rangers penalty with 20 minutes to go. And James Tavernier does what you would expect. Puts it in the back of the net. But Dundee United almost stole a point near the end. Nicky Clark's header hit the crossbar near the end. And it was so close to going in. And Rangers got the three points to continue their lead at the top. We'll stick with match week 19. We're going to go into predictions because there's two games not being played because of the final. So we'll start with Easter Road as Hibbs take on Aberdeen. This is Sean Maloney's first game as manager. David Gray is no longer the interim. It's Sean Maloney. And I think he's going to get off to a good start here. I think it's going to be a KJ 2-1 affair. And Hibbs will get the win over Aberdeen. Aberdeen could maybe be the favourites in some people's eyes because, you know, they're above them in the table. But there's nothing in it. There's a point between them. Goal difference, there's nothing really between them either. I think it'll be a very cagey game. Two teams that are underperforming, definitely. And then we go to the St. Mirren game as they host Celtic. I see Celtic winning this. I only see Celtic winning this. But obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's a game of football. You know, St. Mirren could easily pull an upset. It's the same thing with any 90 minutes. But I only see Celtic winning this. I think it's going to be not a convincing win. But, like, just, you know, we'll, we'll get through the game fine. It'll be 2-0. And yeah, that's how I see that going. And then we'll go into the championship before we go to the final. We need to talk about how non-professional team in the championship has magically gone top of the league. It's only on goal difference, but wow. Our broth are top of the Scottish championship on goal difference above Inverness. 
probably win the league in my opinion. I know that's different to my prediction at the beginning of the season, but Dunfermline will not be as good as I thought they would have. But also in the championship, Tommy Wright has been sacked by Kilmarnock, who are in fifth. Fifth, you go, Kilmarnock should be trying to win that league. I mean, they're only a few points off the top. It's that tight between fifth and first. And sixth and tenth, because it's a ten-team league, is almost like, it's almost two different divisions in this. Like, it's almost like a split already. It's a very interesting thing. And we'll go on to League 2. Sorry to keep this Cup Final talk a bit behind. But Edinburgh City, you know, the, the team we have the career mode on. Sadly, they got pumped 4-0 on the weekend. Not quite as good as the career mode, it seems. But they're still in and about the playoff spots. Hopefully, they get on a good run like they have in the career mode. And Now on to the Cup Final. The thing you're all here for. Probably. <laughs> It's Celtic 2, Hibs 1. But how did the game go? Well, if you haven't watched it, let me run you through it. David Turnbull sadly pulled up injured early in the game, 27 minutes in. And Nia Beaton came on and played amazingly for the boys. Celtic had quite an easy first half. Basically all of the ball. Hibs struggling to put two free passes together. So it's quite a simple first half. Just no goals coming yet. Then the 51st minute. Paul Hanlon, the Hibs captain, put them 1 0 up. It's a pretty decent finish, and he put Hibs up for barely any time of the game. It's 14 seconds after kick after the restart, I almost said kickoff, but it kind of is. And Kyogo equalised in the 52nd minute. And Celtic were back in it. There's some videos going around that are amazing. There's one with a countdown where you've got the Hibs fans celebrating and then just. Like moments after, boom, bang. And then there's like the vlog and all that as well. It's brilliant. Some great stuff that's came of it. And then Kyogo got a second 20 minutes later. Tom Roderick takes the quick free kick, catches out the Hibs defence as Kyogo runs onto it and lobs Matt Macy, the six foot seven keeper, and Celtic win the cup. There's two penalty claims in the game. Early on in the game, you've got Paul uh, McGinn who puts his studs on the back and his hands on Greg Taylor. It's a penalty in my opinion. But I also say the Hibs one later on in the game is also a penalty. So, you know, we both got robbed of a penalty. And so, you know, <laughs> poor refing as per all, obvious. You know, it's, it's Scottish football. We always have terrible refs. It's kind of just the thing at this point but two big decisions that uh, Beaton got wrong but who would have guessed eh but Celtic win yet another trophy and uh, some brilliant performances all round good to see Owen Moffat come on for Kyogo as Kyogo is just back he's not even fully fit and he already single handedly won the cup for us so brilliant that Owen Moffat plays for the B team mainly, but good to see him get two back-to-back -back appearances for the boys. Liam Scales came on to see the game out, and he looks like he probably could become our starting left-back from what I've seen. He looks pretty good going forward especially. And uh, yeah, Celtic won the cup yet again. Thank you Kyogo and thank you Ange Postacoglu. They too, brilliant for the club, and hopefully more to come in my opinion as someone who supports the boys thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time and goodbye